For those that have been following the PS2 homebrew scene for a while, we've seen some pretty amazing changes in the last couple years. However, one of the constraints in the homebrew scene has been storage capacity. When using the internal hard drive, the storage limit has been capped at 2 terabytes. While this may seem like plenty, there are many who would obviously love to have more. Well, that day has finally come, thanks to an individual that goes by the name of Grim Doomer, and his incredible updates that he's bringing to the PS2 homebrew community. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a look at an incredible leap in the PS2 homebrew scene. For those of you who are familiar with PS2 homebrew, you will no doubt have heard of Open PS2 Loader, or OPL. This is the go-to application to get games running on the PS2, whether you're loading them over USB, the iLink port, the memory card slot, or in the case of the original PS2 FAT, the hard drive bay. Now, for the longest time, we've been limited to using two terabyte drives, as that is the max allowable given the storage drivers that OPL supports, which are limited to 32-bit sector addresses. While OPL does support XFAT, which is capable of supporting 64-bit sector addresses, it only supported XFAT for USB, MX4 SIO, and devices connected through the iLink port. XFAT is not supported for the internal hard drive. Even so, as I mentioned previously, all the storage drivers were limited to 32-bit sector addresses, which supports a maximum capacity of 2 terabytes. Now, with this update from Grim Doomer, not only does OPL now support XFAT for internal hard drives, but it also supports 64-bit sector addresses, which allows hard drives larger than 2 terabytes to be used. In fact, this new version of OPL can theoretically support a hard drive with up to 144,000 terabytes, or 144 petabytes, which is absolutely insane. Granted, we'll never need this much storage, let alone find an actual hard drive that comes even remotely close to that amount of storage. Now, another benefit of being able to use a hard drive that is formatted in XFAT is how much easier it is to add games to it. You no longer need to utilize third-party applications to place those games onto the hard drive. All you need to do is simply connect your hard drive to the computer and then drag and drop your ISO files onto the hard drive, and that's it. Super simple and intuitive. So those are really the main heavy hitters when it comes to the newly added features that Grim Doomer coded into this new version of OPL. These updates give us a lot more flexibility when it comes to the storage options on the PS2. There's also actually some other really cool features that Grim Doomer added to OPL, which I'll be getting into a bit later in the video. Now, please note that this version of OPL is still in beta but it is available to the public. So if you want to give it a try, stay tuned and I'll show you just how easy it is to set up. Also, I actually ran into a really strange issue when setting this up, so you'll want to stay tuned to make sure you don't make the same mistake, or rather I should say the same bad purchase that I made trying to get this up and running. All right, so in this video, I'll give you a quick rundown of what you need to get this version of OPL up and running on your PlayStation 2. Then I'll go over all of the new features that this version of OPL brings to the table, review the pros and cons, and of course, provide you with my overall thoughts. So to get started, all you need is a USB thumb drive, a memory card with free McBoot installed, a network adapter that has been converted from IDE to accept a SATA hard drive, or one of these cheap pre-made SATA adapters. Although I've heard that these aren't the best and do tend to fail after a short period of time. And the last thing you'll need is of course a hard drive preferably one that's larger than two terabytes, as well as a way to connect the hard drive to your computer. Now this actually brings me to the issue that I ran into while setting this all up. So I purchased this Sabrin three and a half inch hard drive enclosure from Amazon, thinking this would be perfect for connecting the hard drive to my PC so that I could prep it and load my games onto it. I mean, it's got plenty of great reviews, has an overall four and a half star rating and is relatively cheap. What could possibly go wrong? Little did I know this very enclosure would cause quite the headache. Now, before I continue, I have to give a huge thanks to Grim Doomer because he literally helped me debug the issue and got me back on the right path. Without his help, I would have never figured out what was the root cause of the problem that I was experiencing. 
Anyway, what happened was, after I set everything up using this enclosure, mind you, OPL did not see my hard drive. We both couldn't figure out what was happening since I followed the setup process to a T, and it's hard to screw up since the process is so simple. Eventually, while using his debugging software, we found out that this enclosure, for whatever reason, was changing the drive settings to use a 4K sector size. Hard drives these days use one of two sector sizes, either 512 bytes per sector or 4096. Most drives come by default with a 512 sector size, and it just so happened that OPL is only compatible with drives that are set up using a 512 sector size and not a 4096. Now, I bought this 16 terabyte drive refurbished, and since this is an enterprise-grade hard drive, these sometimes do come with a 4K sector size from the factory. So I decided to try this 8 terabyte drive that I had lying around, and I was pretty sure it had a 512 sector size. Well, after setting it up, it too wasn't showing up in OPL. We ran Grim Doomer's debugging tool again, and found that this drive was also using a 4K sector size. This seemed to be too much of a coincidence, and this is when Grim Doomer thought something else must be going on. And with a bit of research, he was able to find out that this enclosure was causing the drives to use 4K sectors. There appears to be something strange going on with the firmware of this device, so I definitely recommend not picking this up if you do plan on using it for setting up hard drives for OPL. Anyway, what I ended up doing was connecting my hard drive directly to my PC's motherboard using one of these SATA connectors. I unfortunately can't recommend any enclosure at the moment since this Saprint is the only one that I tried. However, I can recommend connecting your hard drive directly to the SATA port on your PC's motherboard as that is the method I use successfully. And if anyone has a good recommendation on an enclosure that doesn't force a 4K sector size, leave it in the comments because I would definitely love to know and I'm sure the rest of the people in the community would also like to know as well. Anyway, once your drive is connected to the PC, assuming it's brand new like mine, we need to first initialize it. To initialize the hard drive, all you need to do is head over to the Disk and Volumes Manager and locate the new drive. Here you can see on my computer it's labeled Sabrent, but just ignore that name because I recorded this tutorial before I knew that enclosure was bad, and the process is the same no matter how you connect the hard drive to the PC. Anyway, just go ahead and hit the large Initialize button. The next window will ask you to select a partition style, and you'll want to go ahead and select GPT. Great, the drive is initialized, but we're not done yet. Now go ahead and open the disk management tool so we can go ahead and format our new volume. To do that, again, locate the hard drive, and you can see here mine is labeled as disk 1. Go ahead and right click the volume, and then select new simple volume. This will open a setup wizard. On the first window, just hit next. Then you can hit next again. Here, you can assign a letter to the drive, but I just kept it to the default E, and then clicked Next. Now, here's where you want to pay attention. You want to hit the File System drop-down menu and select XFAT. This is super important. Once that's done, you can name the drive if you want, but I just left it blank. And once you're all set, hit the Next button. And then hit Finish. Awesome, the drive is all set and ready to go. Now you can simply drag and drop all your games onto the hard drive. Now one thing that I forgot to capture was that you do need to create two folders on the hard drive. One labeled DVD, and the other labeled CD. All your CD-based game ISO files that are less than 800 megabytes go into the CD folder, and all the ISO files that are larger go into the DVD folder. This is just how OPL's folder structure works and sees your games. Great, once all that's done and your games are copied over, your hard drive is all set. Now what you're going to want to do is head over to Grim Doomer's GitHub page and get the new version of OPL, which I'll have linked in the video description. Go ahead and download it, and then extract its contents. Then drag and drop the opl.elf file onto your USB thumb drive. Okay, once you have everything, dismount your hard drive and remove your thumb drive. Then place the thumb drive into your PS2, and then install the hard drive. Turn on the console with FreeMink boot, and then open ulaunch elf. From here, press circle to enter the file browser, 
and then head into the folder labeled Mass. This is our USB thumb drive. Now yours will look different from what you see here, and that's because it'll be the first time you're launching OPL, so the folders you see here have not yet been populated for you. Anyway, highlight the opl.elf file and then press circle. This will launch you into Grimdoomer's new version of OPL. Awesome, so now that we got the new OPL up and running, let me give you a quick rundown of all of its features. But real quick before we do that, if you're not seeing your list of games under the hard drive section of OPL, then you'll want to press start and head into the settings menu, and then scroll all the way down to the hard drive device start mode and change that to auto. You'll want to do the same for USB as well if it isn't already set to it. This may require you to reset the console to enable these settings if you don't see the changes right away. Anyway, once you see your list of games, you're all set. Everything you see here on screen is being accessed through my 16TB hard drive. Pretty amazing. But what's even cooler is that not only can I see the games loaded on my hard drive, but I can also see games on up to four other devices that are connected to the PS2. For example, if I insert another USB thumb drive with games on it, we can scroll over to the USB list and we can see that there are two USB devices connected to the system. One is empty and doesn't have anything listed because that's where we put Grim Doomer's OPL file, but on the other one, we can see a single game that I loaded on there. So what Grim Doomer did was add the ability to load games from multiple devices, which wasn't possible before. Basically, you have the option to load games from the two USB ports, any device connected to the iLink port, as well as MX4 SIO through the memory card slot, all while also being able to access games from our hard drive. Pretty neat stuff. So in summary, the two big features this new OPL update brings is added support for XFAT formatted internal hard drives, giving us the ability to use drives larger than 2 terabytes, as well as the ability to access games off multiple devices connected to the PS2. Alright, so now that we know what this new version of OPL is capable of, let's go over the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, obviously the biggest one is added support for hard drives larger than 2 terabytes. But what I think is even more useful is that since we can now format the hard drive as XFAT, we have the ability to simply drag and drop our ISO files onto the hard drive. No need for specialized software such as WinHIP or HDL dump. This makes the whole process of adding games super simple and very accessible to a lot of people. So those are some pretty big pros, but now let's get into the cons. And really there aren't any cons at all in my opinion. This is overall a huge improvement to OPL, and so far, even while in beta, it works great. However, Grim Doomer has highlighted some limitations that currently exist that he is hoping to address before the final version is officially released. The first limitation is that if you are planning to format your hard drive in XFAT so that you can use a hard drive larger than 2 terabytes, as I'd expect most people who use this version of OPL will be doing, then you will not be able to use free HD boot. There's currently no way to mix APA and XFAT on the same hard drive, so you will need to use free McBoot instead. To me, this is a very small compromise, but it may matter to some folks out there. Grim Doomer told me that he is working on a solution that will work similarly to free HD boot, so that you won't need a separate memory card with free McBoot installed in order to load OPL. He's hoping to have a beta of this new software in the very near future. Now, the second limitation is that USB, iLink, and MX4 SIO devices are all still limited to 2 terabytes. Grim Doomer is hoping that others in the community will update these drivers in OPL. He indicated that his work on the internal hard drive support for XFAT laid a lot of the groundwork for updating the drivers for those other devices in OPL. So while these may be limitations, according to Grim Doomer, I think we're still in a much better place than we were before he added these improvements. Anyway, to learn more about Grim Doomer's new version of OPL, I left a link to his post on PSX Place, as well as his GitHub page, down in the video description. Well, there you have it. An absolutely huge update to OPL from Grim Doomer. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this playlist here, which covers a ton of great PS2 mods that I've done on the channel. So check it out. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next Thursday.